Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Falash. I'm the Deputy Secretary of State for Elections. Thanks for joining us. I've got 9.53 right now, so it'll be a few minutes before we start uh, promptly at 10. Um, this is being recorded, as I think you heard when you first came onto the, uh, onto the Zoom call. We will be posting it also on YouTube uh, with a link from the Secretary of State's regulations page here uh, fairly quickly upon completion of our, our uh, workshop today. I'm sorry, adoption hearing today. If you have any questions, I'll let me know. I'll be here.
All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mark Velasquez. I'm the Deputy Secretary of State for Elections. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, I've got 10 o'clock uh, on my clock, and uh, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start here in a moment. It does sound like there are still a handful of individuals who are joining uh, us, and, and you'll continue to hear that, that pinging noise as they do. Um, but in the interest of respecting your time, uh, we're, we're going to go ahead and begin. As mentioned before, and you probably saw it when you joined the Zoom call, uh, this is going to be recorded. We are going to post it as well um, on the Secretary of State's webpage with a link to the YouTube channel. I'm going to go ahead and, and copy a handful of things into the chat, uh, kind of an administrative note before we formally begin. Uh, that I will use the chat to post uh, links to documents, and in some cases, if there's a question, uh, about a statute, and I may copy and paste it into the, the chat as well. Um, so if you have any questions about something, if you're looking for a document, that sort of thing, uh, please let me know and I'll be able to just copy and paste it into there. Um, so for example, uh, again, when we're done today uh, and as soon as possible, we're going to copy the video um, into the, the website where I just put into the chat. That's the link to our elections regulations page. And you'll notice as you scroll down that page that it's got uh, the, the regulations, this temporary regulation that was proposed, uh, the, the notices, the video of the workshop that we did back on August 12th, uh, as well as the amended text that was posted on the 24th. Uh, and then further down, it has the videos and links and, and some of the other discussion from the previous set of workshops that we did relating to regulations back at the beginning of the year. Here. And then I mentioned, and I, I've even as recently as just this morning, we've received some uh, written feedback that I'll address as well. And before we get going, like I said, the one other thing I want to publish and make sure everybody has access to, we did amend the text uh, based on some feedback we received, uh, not only during the workshop, but before and after. Uh, I have just now published again the, uh, the link. I put that into the chat as well so that you have access to our amended text. Um, we'll discuss those changes today so that while you're looking at those 14 pages, if you're wondering, you know, what has changed, uh, again, I'm going to call those out and highlight those specifically for you so that you don't necessarily have to feel rushed in, in trying to interpret and analyze that document during the conduct of this workshop this morning. I think I've stalled long enough to allow everybody to join. Okay, perfect. Uh, good morning again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm calling this uh, <clears throat> hearing to order. Uh, it is now 10.02 a.m. For the record, I am Mark Velashin, Deputy Secretary of State for Elections, and I will be conducting this adoption hearing today. Uh, before we begin, I want to clarify a few things. Our discussion today during this adoption hearing will be focused on the proposed temporary regulations identified in the agenda. The focus will not be changing statutes, which are, of course, created by the legislature. This regulatory process will not alter any existing laws. Regarding the adoption hearing today, and as a reminder, there are three ways to indicate you wish to make a public comment. Click on the raise hand icon, physically raise your hand, or state in the chat that you would like to make a comment. If there are general questions about elections procedures, I'll be able to discuss them as long as they relate to the proposed regulation. If there are questions that extend beyond the regulations on the agenda, uh, I would be more than happy to set up a separate meeting at another time. Uh, to do so, please contact me at ndelect at sos.nb.gov. I'm going to go ahead and copy that email into the chat as well. Finally, participants in this adoption hearing are reminded to treat one another with dignity and respect. This includes in the use of the chat, which is primarily intended to enable participants to indicate that they wish to make a public comment. Uh, I, I do want to clarify, I said primarily there because if, if any of you are unable to speak, um, but do have a question. Uh, again, if you're able to provide your name into the, uh, the, the chat, I will be able to answer that question as well. <clears throat> this is the adoption hearing for the Secretary of State Elections Division's proposed temporary regulation with the LCB file number T002-22. Uh, <clears throat> the draft of all proposed uh, of the proposed temporary regulation has been provided, uh, as are the statements required pursuant to NRS 233B.0603. Please note that the text of the proposed temporary regulation was updated and posted on August 24th, 2022. Uh, I have already included the link to that updated text in the chat as well. The notice of intent to act upon a regulation was noticed at all required locations back on July 26th, 2022. A workshop was held to select public comment on August 12th, 2022. Since then, the Secretary of State has continued to receive written feedback relating to the proposed regulations that we will discuss today. 
I will address some, but not every one of the proposed suggestions and comments received. Some of the suggestions have been incorporated into these proposed regulations. Finally, the Secretary of State had a number of requirements to weigh in the consideration of the pro provided public comments. These proposed regulations were drafted in order to one, reduce the research and procedure development requirements expected of county election officials in the absence of any regulation relating to the conduct of the hand count, two, to ensure transparency for the public, three, to ensure a secure election, and four, to ensure compliance with timelines identified in, in state and federal law. These regulations were created to address a situation in which no mechanical voting system was used in the tabulation of election results. And we'll discuss that here uh, a little bit further. Um, specifically, uh, actually, I'm sorry, we'll, we'll get to that. I'll get ahead of myself with the agenda. Agenda item two, a general public comment limited on, uh, on matters other than the previously listed LCB file number. Comments will be limited to two minutes per person. Is anyone interested in providing public comment about a matter not on the agenda? If so, please identify yourself either by raising your hand on the screen, clicking the raise hand button in Zoom, or indicating in the chat. Once I call on you, please identify yourself and spell your name for the record. Is anybody interested in making a comment on something not related to the agenda at this time? Don't see anybody interested in making general public comment. Okay. <clears throat> uh, as there's no one else, uh, no one who wishes to speak, that will close public comment. Okay, general public comment is closed. Agenda item three. Uh, before we begin the workshop, I'm going to provide a, a brief introduction to the workshop process. We began the research for this proposed temporary regulation approximately a year ago. We discussed this procedure with numerous other election officials from across the country and have gathered a number of best practices that we incorporated into the development of this regulation. We held a regulatory workshop on August 12th of 2022. And following the completion of this adoption hearing today and assuming the temporary regulation is adopted, the next step is to wait 35 days before filing pursuant to NRS 233B.070. That means that this proposed temporary regulation will not be effective until October 1st of 2022. However, it will be in place until November 1st of 2023, unless we put it through the permanent regulatory process. And to be clear, uh, we do intend to further refine this proposed regulation based on lessons learned out of the 2022 election cycle, and we'll put it through the, and plan on putting it through the permanent regulatory process in 2023. Agenda item four. We'll now move on to the adoption hearing <clears throat> regarding temporary regulation T002-22. First, I'll read a summary of the major changes that were implemented following the workshop on August 12th. Right. There were four major changes uh, that, that were ultimately incorporated into this document uh, based on feedback received leading up to and through the, uh, the workshop. Uh, on August 12th. Uh, first of all, um, and again, if you're, if you're interested in following along, I will cite the, the section um, so that you can look at it. This is in the amended version that was published on August 24th. Uh, first, for the de definition of hand count in section seven, subsection three, uh, we have amended the definition of a hand count to clarify that this relates specifically to the determination of election results with the primary method of counting uh, does not involve the use of a mechanical voting system, right? Does not involve the use of a mechanical voting system. That's important and, and has some pretty, pretty significant uh, impacts. So I'm going to take a moment to explain that first and foremost. All right, so what does that mean? That means that if uh, across the 17 counties in Nevada, if a county election official decides they're interested in conducting a hand count audit uh, or a hand count tabulation, uh, but are going to use as the primary method of tabulation a mechanical system, then these regulations are in essence recommendations, but not required. However, if one of the 17 election officials decides to only use uh, hand count tabulation and to not use mechanical tabulation devices at all in the process, 
of tabulating the results of the election, then these regulations are required. That does a couple things, right? First and foremost, uh, again, that reiterates the importance uh, and the, the trust that we have in our voting systems uh, and the fact that if there is a mechanical system to rely upon, uh, again, there's an increased chance, uh, as, as history has shown us, that the results will be tabulated on time. Um, whereas, again, without that, uh, there would be significant concerns about being able to meet the statutory timelines. Uh, the second part of that is that it allows for flexibility. There have been a number of election officials across the state who have identified uh, that they're interested in continuing the use of mechanical voting systems, but were interested in identifying how they could provide a means for concerned citizens uh, to conduct essentially a post-election audit. Um, but again, uh, again, without having to do the research and identifying the best practices, um, that this provides a standardized means for them to be able to do so. Uh, again, independent of the mechanical tabulation. Uh, and lastly, uh, again, for those uh, individuals in, in counties across the state where there, there is an interest in pursuing hand count tabulation, it allows for further research and development. Uh, while we're confident in the, the process and procedures, uh, the simple fact of the matter is we have not conducted a, uh, a hand count tabulation using these, result, uh, using these methods identified in this procedure, um, certainly not involving you know, tens of thousands or, or, or more um, of, of ballots. Um, and so the, I think this, this change in the regulation reflects that, uh, again, there's going to be a continued refinement of these procedures moving forward. Um, so again, it's going to allow for continued research and development um, in, in the coming uh, months and years. The second change, um, sections five, subparagraph, subsection 4B and D, and in section 12, subsection 4A and C, we have adjusted the numbers uh, regarding batch sizes. Um, we have changed this from 20 ballots to no more than 50 ballots, um, as was re re requested. Uh, we have also, let's see, the, the third thing, we've amended sections three, subsection six, section 10, subsection six. Um, so they include the words amendment two. Uh, this change directly reflects, again, a, a concern that was raised uh, leading up to and also during the workshop uh, relating to the plans for observation uh, by members of the public. Uh, we wanted to incorporate the word amendments to the plans um, to make it very clear that uh, if the decision to conduct a hand count tabulation is made after April, uh, after the, the requirement for the, the observation plans is 90 days prior to the primary, um, this still allows for that to occur after April, uh, but simply that there needs to be an amendment to the plan uh, so the public is aware of what that process looks like. The fourth thing uh, we did more of a kind of a cleanup uh, changes, the terms tally book and tally form are used interchangeably. Um, so we did clean that up as well and change tally book to tally form simply to reflect, uh, again, that, that it is a form. They, they will likely be published in books uh, and pr as provided, but they may not be. But for uh, standardization and simplicity's sake, we, we changed them all to tally book and tally form. Uh, I will state while we're talking about that as well now, uh, and just to be clear, that again, while we have a template, uh, again, this it has not been solidified or uh, signed off on, so to speak, just yet. Um, so there is still, again, an expectation for continued discussion and refinement in that process. Um, that if a county were to identify that they wanted to only conduct tabulation using a hand count, uh, we, the Secretary of State would provide the, those templates and forms. Uh, but again, moving forward, we anticipate continued refinement uh, and development of that process um, as, as the state and individuals continue to gain experience in this. <clears throat> Okay, one other thing I'm gonna do, one last thing, and then we'll get uh, onto the next agenda item when we start getting public comment, agenda item five. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is read into the record um, the digest of the regulations as well um, for everyone, uh, just to make sure we're on the same page. Existing law requires the Secretary of State to adopt regulations establishing uniform statewide standards for counting vote, a vote cast using certain methods of voting, and authorizes the Secretary of State to adopt regulations for counting votes cast using certain types of mechanical voting systems. This regulation sets forth various requirements for a hand count of the ballots. Section seven of this regulation defines the term hand count. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, 
Sections two and nine of this regulation authorize a county uh, or city clerk in consultation with the governing body of the county or city uh, to conduct a hand count of the ballots voted in an election. Sections three and 10 of this regulation require a county or city clerk who is going to conduct a hand count to submit a secretary to the secretary of state 30 days before the date of an election, a plan for the hand count, which must include certain procedures for conducting the hand count plans for the election, the location and necessary equipment and personnel for the hand count, the plans for ensuring the security of the hand count and contingency plans to meet certain deadlines. Sections four and 11 of this regulation require a county or city clerk conducting a hand count to establish a su sufficient number of hand count tally teams, which must consist of at least four election board officers who must not all be of the same political party. Again, at least four. So could there be more? Yes, absolutely. Sections five and 12 of this regulation set forth the procedures required to tally the votes during the hand count. Section six and 13 of this regulation, one, set forth certain requirements for the writing devices used by the hand count tally team, and two, prohibit the hand count tally team members from bringing their own writing devices into the physical location where the ballots will be hand counted. Okay. Agenda item five. At this time, I will open public comment on proposed temporary regulation T002, Dash two two. At this time, if anybody's interested in providing public comment on proposed regulation T zero zero two dash two two, please go ahead and indicate so in Zoom now. Mr. Camp, good morning. <clears throat> good morning. Thank you very much. Uh, I really want to say that uh, these changes are a significant improvement over the first draft, and I really want to thank Mark for uh, acknowledging some of the recommendations that we've made at, from Nye County. I think this represents a good partnership with the Secretary of State's office in refining these procedures, and especially the procedure, the uh, acknowledgement that if we're going to use a tabulation as our primary method, that then we are free to uh, conduct a test that is similar to uh, the Secretary of State's. And I, I see that at this point in time, there are some uh, differences in approach, but they are not significant enough for uh, any uh, major change at this point in time. I do, uh, you know, do think that there's gonna be a lot of learning from the process that we're gonna do in Nye County. And uh, I look forward to working with the Secretary of State's office to uh, learn from that and improve as we go along. And, and I think it's a good step as a partnership between those counties that choo choose to do this and the Secretary of State's office. So. And I also would offer, uh, you know, my assistance to any county that is considering this, and uh, to have discussions about what they're planning on doing in their process and how to uh, to organize it. So, uh, you know, let's make this a team effort. So, I want to thank you for uh, acknowledging some of the recommendations we've made. Thank you, Mr. Camp. I appreciate that. Um, Silver State Voices, please uh, state your name and spell it for the record, and then uh, your time will begin. Hi, thank you. Uh, my name is Cesar Carvajal, uh, spelled C-E-S-A-R-C-A-R-V-A-J-A-L. Um, I'm here as the Democracy Manager with Silver State Voices. And um, while we commend the Secretary of State's office for bringing some uniformity and structure to this process, we are here to testify in opposition to the proposed temporary regulations concerning the hand counting of ballots. Um, you know, within the past year, we have seen a number of county commissions across Nevada propose resolutions that would harm our democratic process. And uh, this, uh, the, the use of hand counting as the primary form of ballot tabulations is one of them, uh, we believe. Apart from diminishing the accuracy, efficiency, and uh, security of elections, the hand counting of ballots is bound to cause additional um, mayhem when it comes to certifying elections, and it would impact outcomes not only at a local level, but also nationally. Hand counting ballots would cause an unnecessary strain on election departments across Nevada, and it would leave our elections vulnerable to the uh, human error that it would inevitably, inevitably bring. We urge election officials to oppose this form of ballot tabulations and any regulations that facilitate hand counting of ballots. Thank you.
Uh, thank you, Mr. Carvajal. I uh, appreciate your comments. Uh, good morning, Ms. Willett, please. Morning, my name is Jennifer Willett, J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R-W-I-L-L-E-T-T. -T. And I'm the grassroots manager at All Voting is Local, an organization that exists to expose and dismantle threats to voter freedom, to make voting fair, safe, and accessible to build a democracy for all. Nevadans believe the freedom to vote must belong to us all. Our state has increased voter participation by making it more accessible to vote, by expanding access to voter registration and increased voting options. In order to protect Nevadans and their votes, we urge the Secretary of State to issue regulations prohibiting the use of hand counts as a primary method of counting ballots in any county with more than 1,000 voters due to the potential violations of state law. These potential violations include failing to meet minimum accuracy standards set by the state law and hand counting procedures violating Nevadans, Nevadan voters' constitutional rights to have their votes accurately counted and their elections fairly resolved. These violations are explained at length in the letter sent by the Brennan Center for Justice at NYU Law, All Voting is Local, ACLU of Nevada, and Silver State Voices. In addition to the violations of state law, hand counting ballots is costly. Counting then tens of thousands of ballots is not time efficient, which again jeopardizes certification, and the cost of labor to do this is high and at the cost of taxpayers. And the chances of error actually increase with hand counting. All Voting is Local continues to support the use of electronic tabulators paired with routine audits of the paper record, which are accurate, quicker to tabulate, and allows for ADA accessible machines. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Willett. I appreciate your comments. Uh, Ms. Sadamir uh, Ruddick. Please. Yes, good morning. Thank you. Morning. Sadmira Ramich. It's spelled S A D M I R A R A M I C. And I'm with the ACLU of Nevada. And we oppose the proposed regulations. Um, our primary concern is the use of hand counting in general. So the Secretary of State's office, by passing these regulations, is condoning the use of hand counting while ignoring the urgency of the issues that such procedures will produce. And the, the counties which are taking the route of walking back decades of progression and going backwards to the use of hand counting as their primary way to tally votes um, are solely doing this based on fa false allegation of election fraud during the 2020 election. And it's based on unfounded claims that the current voting machines are inaccurate and susceptible to hacking. And they are ignoring consistent studies showing evidence to the contrary. And this, this did not in some way come by by accident. And those in charge are teeing up opportunities for tampering and fraud through hand counting. And I think this is a slippery slope that will have dire consequences for the state. And it's, and it's not only in terms of accurate counting, but as others have pointed out, the timely certification of our election and the change in systems so close to the election. There's so much uncertainty that surrounds this and it's very concerning as to what impact it will have on this election and going forward. I would also like to highlight Ms. Willett's testimony in terms of um, how, how this violates our laws. We can't ignore our state constitution. As, and as she has said, this guarantees voters an accurate count of votes. And Nevada laws require voting systems and that does include hand counting to meet or exceed the federal standards for voting systems. We have seen study after study on hand counting procedures that have repeatedly shown the inaccuracy of hand counting and have also shown that using hand counting procedures produce more errors than vote counts using electronic equipment. And it's because of these inaccuracies that making the switch fails to meet or exceed the federal standards uh, for voting system in violation of our laws. And some other concerns that we have is, is not only as to terms of accuracy and that it's in violation of our laws and our constitution, but it, there's no outlined repercussions for violations of these regulations. Uh, we don't know what impact, it, let's say there is a violation that, that's not followed, 
what do we know will happen and what will that what uh, what kind of impact will that have on our election outcome and what kind of delays will we have and it's it's just a recipe for chaos and this backward direction in our process of voting is something that we should be fighting against vigorously instead of allowing these dangers upon our democracy to proceed so I, we are opposed to this and thank you for hearing our comment thank you ms ramek uh, appreciate your testimony uh, good morning, Ms. Uh, Hochstein. Hochstein, yes. Julie, J-U-L-I-E, Hochstein, H-O-C-H-S-Z-T-E-I-N. Good morning, everyone. My name is Julie Hochstein, and I'm a policy fellow at the Campaign Legal Center, a nonpartisan nonprofit organization that works to protect and strengthen the United States democratic process across all levels of government through litigation, policy analysis, and public education. I speak today on the dangers of hand counting paper ballots in Nevada. Hand counting ballots would inevitably result in significant delays in vote counting, processing, and reporting of election results. This can fuel harmful rhetoric among candidates and public figures that undermines the perceived legitimacy of the electoral system. Bad faith actors can capitalize on voters' expectations that election results will be released quickly by arguing that any delay is suspicious and evidence of election fraud, with no basis other than the delay caused by manual counting. We understand that in close races, it may not be possible to project or res report results until every ballot has been counted, but in every case, accuracy is more important than speed. Hand counting ballots is neither accurate nor fast. As you saw in the July primary, counting just 317 ballots by hand in Esmeralda County took seven hours. And that was just a tiny fraction of the votes that can be expected in Nye County in the general election this November. County election officials have numerous important administrative duties in the days immediately following election day, including canvassing and certifying election results. A hand counting requirement would not only delay the reporting of results, but would also be severely disruptive to county officials' ability to fulfill their critical responsibility to conduct the election securely and accurately. The state already has tools that, that ensure the accuracy of its election, including post-election audits. Counties are already required to hand check randomly selected voting machines to ensure the paper record matches the vote total that was reported. And Nevada has implemented a pilot program utilizing risk limiting audits a statistical technique to determine, based on factors like a county size and the election's closeness, how many ballots must be audited to achieve co confidence in the election's outcome. In a democracy, voters choose their leaders and voters decide election outcomes. Every policy and practice in place before and after ballots are cast must be in pursuit of this basic democratic value. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hoxie, and appreciate your comments. Um, Mr. Brian H., please uh, state your name and spell for the record, please. Hi, good morning. My name is Brian Harris, B-R-I-A-N-H-A-R-R-I-S, and I'm calling on behalf of the Institute for Progressive Nevada. Um, while the, Mark Camp, the newly appointed Nye County Clerk, is the only county clerk who decided that their county will hand count balance in this upcoming election that's only 57 days away, until the first day of early vote. We thank the Secretary of State's office for holding this hearing to reaffirm the hand counting process. Uh, the regulation ensures that all voters will have equal access to ballot boxes, which is compliant with the Nevada Voters Bill of Rights. While humans are prone to making mistakes, we're happy to see that there are still standards set forth to make sure that every single vote is counted accurately. Thank you. Thank you, sir, appreciate your Comments, um, Mr. Shiro. Good morning, please. Good morning. Uh, my name is Carissa Tashiro. That's Carissa C A R R I S A Tashiro T A S H I R O, and I'm an attorney with Nevada Disability Advocacy and Law Center, which is the state protection and advocacy agency for people with disabilities. So, first, I would just like to say that we appreciate the effort that has gone into um, attempting to standardize a hand counting process in light of the movement towards hand counting in some of our uh, 
county jurisdictions in Nevada, but that said, I do want to echo others' concerns about the potential administrative burden and inaccuracy of allowing a hand counting system. And I'd also like to raise a concern about equity for people with disabilities. So in jurisdictions where paper ballots are being proposed, individuals with disabilities are still going to need access to electronic voting machines. Um, federal law, including the ADA and HAVA, in addition to our state constitution, require that. And these machines are going to produce a ballot that is visually distinguishable from paper ballots. So then during a hand counting process, it would be obvious which votes are cast by people with disabilities. And we're concerned that that compromises their right to maintain the secrecy of their votes, um, potentially in violation of the law. Uh, we think that electronic tabulation is effective and we're concerned that allowing counties to revert to hand counting will lead to inequality for people with disabilities and could also compromise the um, integrity and reputation of our elections. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for your comments. At this time, is there anyone else interested in making comments on proposed survey regulation teasers or 2-22. I'll give it a minute just to make sure. Mr. Smith, good morning. Good morning, Mark. Uh, my name's sorry. <laughs> uh, my name's Jeff Smith. I'm with Nevada Democratic Victory. That's uh, J E F F S M I T H. Um, I I don't really have a comment. I have a question about the uh, the change in the definition, and I don't know if that's appropriate for here or if we're going to have a separate section where we ask questions. We can we can take that now, certainly. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry, Mark. Can you say that again? Yes, yeah. uh, absolutely. Okay, go ahead. Um, so my question on the definitional change, just to clarify, um, is this a, just kind of like saying, all right, well, if you're going to do an audit that's separate from the machine count, then these regulations don't apply. That's one thing. Um, if you had theoretically a count where it's like, all right, we're gonna count 50 ballots using the machines, everything else by hand count, would these regulations apply to that? The short answer is, is yes, those regulations, these regulations would apply to that. Uh, we, we define it as the primary method. So if, if there's a full tabulation, um, again, by machine, then this is optional uh, or recommended rather. Uh, but, but any other deviation from that, if the intent is to uh, tabulate the mail ballots, for example, by hand only and not have any mechanical device involved in that process, then this, these would absolutely take effect and be required. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Rowlett. Good morning, Mark. Um, I have a follow-up question to that. My name is Aubrey Rowlett, Carson City Clerk Recorder. That's A-U-B-R-E-Y-R-O-W-L-A-T-T. Um, in our normal course of post-election auditing, um, because Carson City has different election equipment, we do, we don't have the VV pat rolls, so we do the, um, we take a random of the express vote ballot cards and do a hand count of those randomly. Um, that's a very minimal um, amount that we take. Would that also fall under these regulations or can we continue to do that as the VVPAT audit? Thank you for the question. Uh, and the short answer is yes, you may continue to do that. Uh, as there's the mechanical tabulation prior to, uh, those sorts of, of post tabulation audits um, are absolutely able to continue. And, and just like how we saw in Lander and in es Esmeralda, um, and there's been discussions about similar type activities elsewhere across the state, um, those, again, is, there's a mechanical device that tabulates first, 
Um, that, so we have a number and we're not worried about if there are delays, uh, staffing issues, resource limitations, those sorts of things, uh, or other uh, unfortunate interruptions that might delay or cause uh, statutory timeline concerns. Um, as, as long as the machine's in, in place and first, then, then again, there's, there's, there's much more flexibility allowed for the uh, county election officials to be able to conduct those post-election audits uh, in a manner that satisfies your board of supervisors uh, and your constituents' concerns. Ms. Rajvik, please, do you have another question or comment? I do have a question, if I may, um, uh, based on the changes. So it went from having 20 ballots being counted at a time now to 50 ballots. And I know at the last, at the workshop, when uh, there was questions raised in terms of how that number was determined, you had specifically highlighted that it was based on studies um, taken regarding human ability to re remain in that repetitive um, motion and the ability to remain concentrated and that anything past 20 would basically in the sense cause more error. So what, I guess where, what, what is being relied upon to make that change from 20 to 50 given those studies? Yes, ma'am. So I appreciate the question. Uh, and, and to be clear, it was less a, uh, an attentiveness piece, uh, though it certainly tied into that. It was really more of the logistical issue of, of at about 20 is where we had been told the sweet spot is as a best practice uh, from the jurisdictions across the country that conduct these. Uh, some of our discussions uh, with Mr. Camp and the other feedback that we received, again, in the, in the interim between the workshop and today, um, that there was a little bit of clarity in regards to why uh, individuals may want to go up to 50. And, and, and even before I get into that explanation, I do want to just remind everyone that, um, you know, we consider these, these regulations to be a, a work in progress. This is not finalized. This is not the, the end all be all that, that they're going to go verbatim into the permanent regulatory process. Uh, we, we very much anticipate continuing to hear and discuss. I mean, I was talking to a colleague uh, in another state 10 minutes before I joined this call about another state that has discussions that are ongoing about hand count regulations. So the, the, the information that we're gonna to continue to gain will, will continue to grow and we're going to hear from more people's experiences so that as we move forward and, and try to define what right looks like for Nevadan uh, election officials, um, th there are, are going to be changes coming up for sure. Um, specific to the, the change in tabulation, uh, there's really two parts to that, and one of it, one part that that opened our our you know, willingness to to really again expand that up to 50. Uh, we were very careful, and, and, and again, my recommendation to the secretary that we make that up to 50, um, so that again, if a county wishes to keep it at 20, they're able to do so. Um, but it allows uh, again the um, you know for some of the, the voting systems that we use, the tabulation machines accept batches of 50, uh, with the idea being that that way you could put 50. Uh, ballots through a, a tabulation machine and then conduct a hand count of those same 50 ballots um, immediately following for verification purposes. Uh, it's possible with the machines that we have too to get batch size results so that you could then compare the direct results of the machine uh, machines review and, and tabulation as well as then making it an easier translation to the uh, the human team sitting down also uh, to, to work on those 50. And, and again, right, like this is, this is something that if over the course of the next uh, 12 to 18 months, we identify that, you know, really 50, it, it really just isn't cutting it. And we do in fact need to keep it at, at 20. Uh, there, there's certainly uh, an open discussion about removing, moving that back down in the other direction. Um, so again, they're going to be, uh, you know, essentially a living document as we move forward and, and prepare for the, uh, the process of the permanent regulations. D does that help answer your question? Um, a little bit, yes, in terms of um, how you got there. I was, I guess I was thinking more specifically, was there other studies that were provided that show, that shows that uh, up to 50 is an acceptable standard? Um, and I understand that uh, but machines putting in a 50 at a time, I, I think machines function much differently than uh, human error, and which is why I was hoping that maybe, is there anything specific that was relied upon that resulted in that change? So so even, uh, short answer, no, uh, even even in the, uh, 
the discussions that we've had with other states uh, and, and other election officials across the country, it, it has been kind of a varying degree. We came to the 20 based on some recommendations and what we felt was appropriate. Uh, again, expanding that to 50, um, again, still allows for uh, the conduct of it. Um, but again, as, as you have heard already on this call today, it does seem like moving forward, these recommendations, or, sorry, these regulations will ultimately be recommendations uh, that will continue to build upon. Uh, but no, the, again, frankly, the, there wasn't necessarily a study that, that tied us to 20 in the first place. It was, it was really um, anecdotal evidence based on a number of jurisdictions across the country. Uh, but again, in the same sense, there were plenty of anecdotal and, and other type best practices that we heard from other states and jurisdictions that and ultimately, when we looked at them through the lens of the Nevada electorate and, and our election officials' resources and, and uh, you know, that sort of thing, then it just it, it, some of those just didn't make sense, uh, which is why we adjusted it. But we'll certainly, again, the goal going forward is to make sure that we right size this and continue to refine the processes. So. Um, you know, fully anticipate that changing uh, sometime in the next, again, six to 18 months, one way or the other, based on our experiences. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other, uh, uh, any individuals interested in making public comment relating to temporary regulation T002-22? Going once. With Mr. Smith joining at the last minute, I feel this is probably, uh, I see a question in the chat regarding reporter questions. Um, the best way to get answers in regards to uh, for the press, uh, I'm going to copy and paste our PIO email address into it. If you would please uh, reach out to our PIO Ms. Jennifer Russell, and she'll be able to help set up a time where we can either directly discuss or, or address any questions that you have um, that way, if possible. You're welcome. Okay, uh, if there's no other public comments, Oh, I see. <laughs> Mr. Smith, I understand. I apologize. Okay, there's no one else that uh, wishes to speak that will close public comment. Uh, public comment on proposed temporary regulation T002-22 is closed. Uh, and temporary regulation LCB file number T002-22 is adopted. We, we will wait the required 35 days before filing with the Secretary of State, uh, which again, for those of you who were not on the call prior, uh, just so that you understand the process, the statute, the Secretary of State, of course, is the filing office uh, for, for a number of documents, uh, including regulations. Um, and so while the Secretary of State and Elections Division is proposing these regulations, um, we have to wait the 35 days to file them with ourselves, if that makes sense. So they, they will not go into effect again, though, until October 1st of, of 2022. <clears throat> okay, this time I will uh, we'll go to agenda item six, general public comment on matters other than the previously listed LCB file number, comments limited to two minutes per person. If anybody's interested in providing public comment about a matter not in the agenda, please go ahead and indicate so now in Zoom. Is there anybody interested in making public comments about a matter not on the agenda. Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll go ahead and close public comments, uh, general public comment. Uh, so uh, before we adjourn, I will simply say again, thank you all for joining us today uh, to ensure that you receive a copy of the regulations. Again, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can sign up for our e-notify at nbsos.gov, um, or you can contact the elections division at 
5705 or nvelect.sos.nv.gov. I'll copy that phone number and the email into the chat as well to make sure everybody has it. Uh, so again, any questions relating to EBV's regulations, uh, please reach out to our PIO. Uh, otherwise, again, if it's an election related matter relating to any aspect of Nevada elections, please don't hesitate to reach out to us here at the Elections Division. Okay, I thank everyone for your comments and participation. Uh, the hearing, this adoption hearing is adjourned at 1045. Thank you all for your time.